allow me, Bhante, to ask for the three refuges and the five virtues. Would you please give me the virtues, Bhante? Sad, sad, yes. So just before we proceed, we <laughs> I just wanted to give a brief explanation on the history of these taking these three refuges to the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha so that w it is well understood what it means and that we're not actually adhering to something that we feel forced to or that is uh, against our will that is really not the purpose here so in the original discourses um, when after listening to the Buddha talking uh, very often this is how people felt very uplifted because they really were uh, impressed for example um, at what the Buddha would say he would give a very wonderful discourse and it would really resonate with them and at the end of the discourse they they would very often uh, do this procedure well at that time it wasn't a procedure it was just a movement of a natural movement for people to take refuge into into uh, the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha the community of people the monks and the lay people that are practicing this wonderful Eightfold Path and so at the, the time of the Buddha it wasn't so much of a practice like it is now it was more like something that people felt drawn to do after listening to the Buddha for example though over time it has been a mere 2600 plus years <laughs> some things have happened and this has become a practice it has become something that is very regular very traditional when we go to monasteries when we go to meditation centers not all of them but many and uh, because the Buddha said that someone who goes for refuge uh, with a confident mind with an uplifted mind in the Buddha the Dhamma and the Sangha is highly highly meritorious but the thing is this has to be done from our own will otherwise it's not <laughs> so it loses its meaning though some people though though it has not been a tradition really started from the Buddha it has become something that people do because they feel very uplifted it's a reminder for them if they have taken the three refuges to take them again it builds up a certain kind of strength in people it can uplift their minds with faith and faith in the best way possible Fa faith as um, strength and confidence in in wholesome states in in this wonderful teaching and so it is very important to understand properly what this means and what this does and why we take the refuges and nobody is ever forced to take them we only recite them because it has become tradition and it has some very wonderful aspects to it and even if we don't go to them it is always good on a meditation retreat to at least consider well everything that you are hearing that you're experiencing on this retreat it doesn't come from me <laughs> it comes from the Buddha and so we are so fortunate and to really consider that by in fact simply being here and practicing we need a certain amount of faith in in that teaching and so 
naturally this is a display of a kind of a going for refuge in itself we are taking refuge in that teaching for that 10 days and so this is also a quite beautiful way a beautiful approach to see it and without further ado <laughs> we will go for the refuges and precepts the virtues and as you notice i always um, recite them in Pali first and then in English so that the original language of the Buddha can be preserved and that the meaning can be understood which are both very important Buddhang Saranang Dhammang Saranang Sanghang Saranangachami. I go to the Buddha as a refuge. I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. I go to the Sangha as a refuge. Duti Yampi Buddhang Saranangachami. Duti Yampi Dhammang Saranangachami. Duti Ampi Sanghang Saranang Chami. For a second time, I go to the Buddha as a refuge. For a second time, I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. For a second time, I go to the Sangha as a refuge. Tati Ampi Buddhang Saranang Chami. Tati Ampi Dhammang Saranang Chami. Tati Ampi Sanghang Saranang Chami. For a third time, I go to the Buddha as a refuge. For a third time, I go to the Dhamma as a refuge. And for a third time, I go to the Sangha as a refuge. Now the virtues. Panati pata ve ramani sikha padang samadhiyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from harming living beings on purpose. Adina dana ve ramani sikha padang samadhiyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from taking what is not given. Kame sumi chachara we ramani sikha padang samadhiyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musa wada we ramani sikha padang samadhiyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from false speech. Sura medaya madja pamadat. Tana we ramani sikha padang samadhiyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from mind altering substances. And now the eight virtues. We kala bhojana we ramani sikha padang samadhiyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from eating at improper times. Natcha gita vadita vibhu visukhadasana malaganda vilepana dharana mandana vibhusanatthana veramani sikha padang samadhiyami I undertake the practice to refrain from dancing, singing, listening to music, seeing entertainment shows, wearing necklaces, perfumes, and beautifying the body with cosmetics. Ucha sayana maha sayana we ramani sikha padang samadhiyami. I undertake the practice to refrain from high and luxurious beds and seats. Silena sugatingyanti, silena bhoga sampada, silena nibutingyanti, tasama sila visodaye. By virtue, a good destination or a good life is obtained. 
By virtue, success comes to be. By virtue, one is liberated. This virtue is to be perfected. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. And now the verses of the Dhammapada. Mano Puban Gamma Dhamma, Mano Sitta Mano Maya, Manasa Chad Padutena, Basatiwa Karotiwa, Tatonang Tukang Anweti, Chakang Wahato Padang. Mind precedes all things, all are governed by the mind, created by the mind. If with an unwholesome mind a person speaks or acts, trouble is bound to follow along as the wheel dragged by the foot. Mano pu bhangamadhamma mano sitta mano maya manasacha pasannena bhasatiwa karotiwa tatonang sukhang anweti Jaya wa anapayini. Mind precedes all things. All are governed by the mind, created by the mind. If with a wholesome mind a person speaks or acts, then happiness is bound to follow along, like one's own shadow. Nahi virana virani samantida kurachanang Avaranacha sammanti isa dhammo sanantano. Never is anger appeased by anger. Only by non anger is it appeased. This is an eternal law. Idha modati, pecha modati, kataputto ubhayatta modati. So modati, so pamodati. These wakama visuding atano. In this world and the next, one rejoices. The doer of good rejoices in both worlds. One rejoices, one delights, seeing the brightness of one's own actions again and again. Sabha pasa karanang kusalasa upasampada sa chitta pariyodapanang itang buddhana sasanang Abandoning what is unwholesome and cultivating what is wholesome, elevating one's mind. This is the Buddha's teaching. Kanti paramang tapotitika Nibbanang paramang vadanti buddha Nahi pabbajito parupagati Samanohati parang vihetayanto Patience and acceptance are the highest sacrifice. Nibbana is highest, say the Buddhas. One is no spiritual person who strikes another. One is no monk who oppresses others. Anupavado anupagato patimokke cha sangwaro matanyuta cha bhatasaming patancha sayanasanang adhijite cha ayogo etang buddhanasasanang not looking to blame, not looking to hurt. Self-mastered by the guidelines of virtue. Knowing the right amount of food, living alone, and being devoted to the higher mind. This is the teaching of the Buddhas. Susukkang vata jivama yesang no natikinchanang Piti bhakang bhavisama deva abhasarayatta 
Surely we are living in bliss, we who have nothing. Feeders on joy we shall be, like the devas of streaming radiance. Metta viharyo bhikkhu, pasanno buddha sasane, adigache padang santang, sangharu pasamang sukkang. The monk who lives in boundless love, who is confident in the Buddha's teaching, accomplished one walks at peace, experiencing the happiness of stilling the tension. And today we have a few wonderful suttas from the numbered discourses. And this first sutta is the Metta Sutta, but there are many suttas called like that, so that's not a very good reference. <laughs> um, it talks about the 11 benefits of Metta, of practicing Metta, and it gives a small glimpse at how the Buddha also taught it and taught how to develop it. When the liberation of the mind through boundless love is practiced, developed, cultivated, used as a vehicle, made as a foundation, consolidated, accumulated, and thoroughly undertaken, Eleven benefits are to be expected. What eleven? One sleeps happily. One wakes happily. One is not disturbed by any nightmares. One is loved by all humans. And one is loved by all non-humans. One is protected by the devas. One does not come upon fire, poison, or knife. One's mind quickly enters into samadhi. One's features are bright. And one dies without going astray. And if one has not gone beyond to a further state, nibbana, one goes to the Brahmic plane. When the liberation of the mind through boundless love is practiced, developed, cultivated, used as a vehicle, made a foundation, consolidated, accumulated, and thoroughly undertaken, these eleven benefits are to be expected. And that was from the books, the book of the elevens. Now we have a sutta from the Book of Ones on practicing love for the time of a finger snap. And this answers a question that some people might have about what we call practicing jhana, which is a big word apparently. If even for the time of a finger snap, a person practices with a mind of love, here it's said a monk practices, but anyone also practices with a mind of love, I say that that person is one who lives practicing jhana, one who practices the teacher's teaching one who applies his instructions, and this person eats the country's alms undiluted. What to say then of one who would cultivate it? Even if for the time of a finger snap, monks, a monk develops to have a mind of love, I say that he is not 
He is one who lives practicing jhana, one who practices the teacher's teaching, one who applies his instructions, and what and that person eats the country's alms undiluted. What to say then of one who would cultivate it? Again, if even for the time of a finger snap, a monk attends with a mind of love, I say that he is one who lives practicing jhana, one who practices the teacher's teaching, one who applies his instructions, and one eats the country's alms undiluted. What to say then of one who would cultivate it? And just one last on uplifting company to let you go on your way on a good on a good foot there are three kinds of company monks of companies what three the highest company the dissentious company and the harmonious company what is the highest company? Here monks, the company where elders, elder monks are not living in abundance, are not lazy, and walk the path unburdened. They take the lead in solitude meditation, arouse energy for attaining the unattained, arriving at the unarrived, realizing the unrealized and those who follow afterwards also practice along the same lines of understanding they too are not living in abundance not lazy walking the path unburdened taking the lead in solitude meditation arousing energy for attaining the unattained arriving at the unarrived, realizing the unrealized. This is called the highest company. What is the dissentious company? Here monks, the company where monks live given to dispute, contention and strife, attacking each other with words like swords. This is called the dissentious company. And what is the harmonious company? Here, monks. That company where monks live in harmony, rejoicing together without strife, blending like milk and water, seeing each other with kindly eyes. This is called the harmonious company. At that time, monks, when monks live in harmony, rejoicing together, without strife, blending like milk and water, seeing each other with loving eyes, those monks generate abundant goodness, abundant merit. At that time, these monks are living with Brahma, that is, the liberation of the heart by joy. From that gladness, joy arises. Joyful at heart, their body becomes calm. With calm bodies, one experiences happiness. And the happy mind becomes collected. Just as when rain pours down heavily on the mountain tops, that water rushes down, filling up the main valleys and the gorges. The main valleys and gorges being full, they fill the streams. The streams being full, fill the creeks. The creeks being full, fill the rivers. The rivers being full, they fill the estuaries. 
the estuaries being full, fill the great ocean. In the same way, at that time when monks live in harmony, rejoicing together without strife, blending like milk and water, seeing each other with loving eyes, those monks generate abundant goodness. At that time, those monks are living with Brahma, that is, the liberation of the heart by joy. From that gladness, joy arises. Joyful at heart, the body becomes calm. With a calm body, ease is experienced, and the happy mind becomes collected. These are the three companies. I wish you a wonderful morning. And Continue smiling like you are. That is very good. And I will see you on interview or this afternoon at the guided meditation. Take care.